hello, hello. I know I said like 10 minutes ago that I'd be on in five minutes, but it was 10 minutes. Here we are. I'm going to wait just a little bit um, for some people to get on. I know we had a couple people waiting. Um, so I'm going to wait just a little bit. Um, maybe about a minute or so. See if we can get some people on here. Um, golly, long weekend, huh? We had kind of a catch-up day on Wednesday, and then Thursday was a drop-up day, and there was no school on Friday, and here we are today. I don't know about you guys. I love the long weekend, but then it kind of makes Mondays a little harder to harder to get into, you know? And then it's like, oh, it's Monday, I gotta do work. It's tough, huh? Well, I have a sleeping, I have a baby on the floor. <laughs> We're supposed to be going to sleep. Probably won't be. Been having a hard time napping recently. Yeah. Alrighty. This morning, we are going to um, get into chapter 18. Chapter 18 is over long division. Um, long division is, uh, well, pretty much what it sounds like. It's division that is long. It's division with multiple numbers. So by the time we are finished with this chapter, you are going to easily be able to do um, division equations like um, this. You'll easily you will know how to do division like this. Another way, oh, you can really see the reflection there. Goodness, it's cloudy out today. Another way to write this equation is with your division frame. So this is something that you're easily going to be able to do by the time we're done with this chapter. Um, this is called long division because it's got um, longer numbers, but also you'll see that there's a process that we do where we do math and it kind of goes down. And that'll make more sense when we get into the bigger numbers. Um, this is going to be the last chapter that we're going to be able to do together. Um, I wondered if we'd be able to get into decimals. We won't. However, that's okay. Um, Mrs. Peterson has told me that long division is something that she would at least like you to have an idea or have seen before you get into fourth grade. So um, I can't believe that we only have three weeks of school left. Um, I can't believe that we've already been doing school like this for more than six weeks. So I bet these weeks are just gonna fly by. Um, we will do some Zoom meetings sometime soon so we can all see each other. Um, before we jump into the lesson though, I'm gonna do this and try to turn that. We have our new story, our new uh, and final um, national park that Haley and Horatio are visiting. Resting against a massive tree trunk, Haley and Cyrus stared up into the branches above them. They were on a special trip to Redwood National Park in California today. Cyrus was doing a report on redwood trees, and so today's visit was part of his research. This is incredible, Haley said. I feel so small. Me too, Cyrus agreed. You know, somewhere in this forest is the tallest tree in the world, Hyperion, 379 feet tall. That's in my report. Also, did you know that redwood trees can go grow to be 22 feet thick? Goodness, Haley replied. Cutting one down would take forever. Maybe that's why these trees have lasted so long. Besides the fact that they're protected in a national park, of course. Cyrus giggled. Actually, I read that they last so long because they produce an acid that repels disease and bugs and because their bark is fire resistant. No wonder they live so long, Haley remarked. Cyrus nodded, then scanned the trees around them. Say, where's your furball? His name is Horatio, Haley jokingly scolded her brother. I don't know where he went. Maybe he's trying to climb to the top of this tree. Cyrus, Cyrus stood up and sauntered over to a red sign by the, to, excuse me. Cyrus stood up and sauntered over to read a sign by the tree. Well, if he gets to the top, he'll have climbed pretty high. 
This says that the tree is 368 feet tall. He gazed at the forest towering above them. I wish I could bring my whole class here so they could see the size of these redwoods, he said, and then looked at Haley. Could you help me work on my report? I need to help my class realize how tall redwoods are. Haley thought for a moment. Perhaps math could help you. Yeah, math would be a great tool, Cyrus replied. He stared upwards, looking for inspiration. But how exactly? What if your classmates could compare the height of this tree to something they can see, like you? Her sister, his sister suggested. How tall are you? Cyrus stood up straight. I'm four feet tall exactly, he said proudly. So how do I compare my height to this tree's height? Haley patiently explained. We know that this redwood tree is a redwood tree is about 368 feet tall. And we know that your height is four feet. If we divide the height of this tree by your height, we can see how many Cyrus is tall the tree is. Cyrus grinned. Great idea. He stood stock still as he worked through the math in his head. As her brother was thinking, Haley noticed something far above her on a trunk of the tree she was leaning against. She squinted at it and, at it and then gasped. Hey, there's Horatio! The little squirrel came zipping down the trunk, chattering excitedly about something. Cyrus caught Horatio as the squirrel jumped on into his arms. What is it, Furball? Did you get to the top? Horatio seemed to nod his little head, still chattering. Cyrus looked up at the tree with wonder. Good job, Horatio. Haley stroked the squirrel's tail and then looked sideways at Cyrus. So did you realize we used another biblical worldview truth about math today? Cyrus stared at her in amazement. Seriously? Okay, I know math shows the world is designed. Math helps people help people. Math helps us do work and math has limits. So which one is it? How did you wiggle your arm out? I wrapped her up real tight in a blanket and she wiggled her arms out. In your math work text on page 229, there is um, some more discussion that you can have with somebody um, in your house. If you'd like to, you don't have to. Um, Haley and her little brother Cyrus are exploring Redwood National Park. Cyrus is reaching the mammoth trees for, researching the mammoth trees for a school report, and he's not sure how effectively to explain the size of the trees to his classmates. Haley suggests using division to find out how many Cyrus's tall the redwood tree is. Remember that when we do division, division is taking something and separating it into equal parts. Um, so you're going to start with bigger numbers and when we do our long division that we're going to learn, you'll always end with a smaller number than what you started with. Um, Today, you are going to need your ones from your place value kit. Um, and just so you know, I'm going to be calling them red squares. I'm not going to call them ones because we're not talking about place value. That's not how we're using them this time. So it's still part of your place value kit, but I'm going to call them your red ones. Okay, so when I say red ones, you're actually talking about or your red squares. Oh. I'm going to be calling them your red squares. So when I say your red squares, you know that I mean those little red and purple ones. So you're going to need those. You also are going to need um, a multiplication and division mat. You all have this. That's the white piece of paper that you have that's got the blue lines in it. And there's... 10 boxes, it looks something like that. That's your multiplication and division mat, okay? Um, if you don't have this, you can quickly make one on a piece of paper, but I want you to keep it because we will need it throughout this chapter for the next three weeks, okay? So you'll need your red squares, you'll need your division mat, and um, I know, I know, I know. You guys should all have um, these. Division grids. Hey, hey, you can't learn division. You're too, your brain just doesn't get it. Yeah. 
You guys should all have these. Um, <laughs> I don't think you'll need this today. I may have put it on the list, but have these with you um, in case you do need them. Okay, this is how we're going to be um, making our division nice and neat when we get there. Okay, so to start off, we read our story about Haley and Cyrus, and she said that we used a biblical worldview truth, and Cyrus wasn't sure which one it was. He, uh, there's some clues. He asked her, could you help me, hmm, on my report? Math, and she said, well, we could use math. And he said, yeah, math would be a good, hmm. Our four biblical worldview truths, which one of those did Haley and Cyrus use? Remember, ugh, the truths that we have are math is a tool to help people work. Math shows the world is designed. Math helps people help people. And math does not have all the answers, or math has limits. So one of these four, I don't know if I can get it all in the same picture. Maybe. <laughs> One of these four is the worldview truth that Haley and um, Cyrus are using. He said, can you help me hmm, on my report? And math would be a good hmm to use. What do you think? He asked, could you help me work on my report? And that math would be a good tool to use. So the truth that we're learning about math in this chapter is that math is a tool to help people work, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and get started with the lesson now that it's been about 10 minutes in doing our introduction. So you'll need your division mat and you'll need your red squares, okay? Let me get my camera off. Set up and ready here. And hopefully this baby doesn't lose her mind crying. Okay, I'm gonna have to make my board because, or make my mat, because I don't have mine. Um, I'm gonna put mine up and down. Yours doesn't have to be. Well, I've lost my other blue marker. It doesn't have to be blue. So make sure you're taking those out. Okay. Um, just like I did a couple chapters ago, I'm gonna use my red, but I'm gonna make circles because it's a lot quicker for me to use circles and squares. Alrighty. I'm going to start by uh, saying a math story to you, and then we're gonna figure out what we're doing from there. Austin has 18 pieces of candy to place in three bags. How many pieces can Austin put into each bag? Austin has 18 pieces of candy to place in three bags. How many pieces of can Austin put into each bag? So the question is, how many pieces of candy does Austin have? Austin has 18 pieces of candy. Okay, how many bags of candy will Austin make? Three. He has eight pieces of candy. He has PC pieces, 18 pieces. He has three bags. And what does the problem ask us to do? Okay, the problem asks us to divide 18 in, uh, pieces of candy into three sets. Each bag is a set or a group. So how can you picture this problem? How can you picture this? You'll take 18 squares 
and you will partition or uh, split them up into uh, one at a time into each set until you've used up all of your squares. So what you're going to do is you're going to have your little pile of red squares. You're going to have 18 of them. If you don't have 18, you can make some. They're nice and easy. Use your note cards. It's a lot thicker. Um, and they'll last a little longer than your lined paper. Okay. So you're going to get out 18 red pieces and you'll put them into three groups until you run out. So do them. So you place your squares in your sets just as I'm going to as I make mine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Oh, notice, please, that I did not put one into each part of my mat because there's 10 groups here, but how many bags does Austin have that he's splitting his candy into? Austin only has three bags. So that's why we would take our 18 and only partition it into our three groups. So there's an equation for what we just did. Do you know what it is? Eighteen. And what did we do with the eighteen? We divided eighteen into equal sets of three. How many are in each set? How many squares do you have in each of your three sets? Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two, four, six. Three, six. Different ways to count it. We divided 18 pieces of candy into three groups and we found that our answer was six. So what's the sentence? What sentence answers the question? Our question was how many pieces of candy did Austin put into the bag, into each bag? Our sentence would be Austin put six pieces into each bag. Okay, this should look familiar because we've done a chapter over division. Um, we've done a chapter over division and so what we're learning today is there are three steps to doing long division, okay? There is a process in how to do it. Um, and these three steps will help you solve more complex division problems in this chapter and next year when you go into fourth grade. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay. Now. Look at our equation here. I want to focus your attention on that equation. What is another way to write 18 divided by 3? Hint. I showed you earlier. Okay. We use this thing. What do we call that thing? That is our division frame. How do you read this equation? How would you read this equation? Okay, you would read this as 18 divided by three. 18 divided by three. Sometimes, and I'm gonna erase this and write it again. Sometimes when I'm writing divi long division problems, I like to write it like this and say this in my mind. 18 divided by three equals, because this shows you that you're dividing them and you're, what's your answer? The quotient goes on top or above that equals. So I like to write 18 divided by three equals 
That helps me read it correctly and write it correctly every time. Whoa. So if you look at your mats where you have your red squares, what does the dividend 18 in the division frame represent? We have 18 what? Austin has 18 what? He has 18 pieces of candy. What is the divisor? Mmm. Dividend. Divisor. The three is what in our math story? 18 is the pieces of candy. The three represents what? Okay. Three is the divisor. That's for our three bags. You can um, solve division problems in a process called long division. Uh, the term long division actually is a series of math operations used to solve a division problem. So, um, here's basically what that means. Ultimately, what we're going to be doing is we will be doing division, but while we're doing the long division, there are some steps that we have to do, and some of those steps include things like subtraction and multiplication, all inside while we're doing division. So I know that may sound confusing. So um, let me read that again to you. The term long division, you don't, you don't get a say right now. It's not your turn to talk. Long division is a series of math operations. So it's steps. Remember operations, when we ask what's the operation, operations of math are multiplication, division, subtraction, and addition. So a series of operations um, used to solve a division problem. So division is the problem that you're doing. You use the other operations to help you. I hope that makes a little more sense to you. Um, so we have 18 divided by three, which equals six. When it comes to writing an equation, in a division frame, I almost said a fraction bar, that's not right. In a division frame, where are you going to write um, the quotient? When we use a division frame, where do you write the quotient? Okay, you're going to write it on top, but not just on top. There's an important place on the top bar that your answer has to go. What is 18 divided by three? Okay, six. The six is going to go in the ones place above the frame or above the eight here in 18. Right there. Oops, and I kind of erased it. It goes in the ones place when we have division that looks like this. What is the first step? So what is the, well, I don't know why they want me to ask you that question. You don't know that. The first step in the division process, here's what I'm going to do. Um, no, I am going to do it here. Number one, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to divide. The first step in long division is to divide. Um, you have used this first step in long division process to solve division facts in previous chapters. So now we're going to use the additional steps to divide division facts and more complex problems. So you have done this before. You've done things like 18 divided by 3 equals 6. You've done things like 12 divided by 4 equals 3. You've done the first step in long division already. And that's dividing, which is why we taught you how to <laughs> this way we taught you how to divide first. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to teach you the additional steps that we use when it comes to more complex equations. Okay? 
before we do that, we need to, we're gonna, oh, your pacifier is now across the room. Hope you don't need it. We are going to check our division equation. If you check addition with subtraction, how will you check division? If addition and subtraction are used to check each other, what will you use to check division? You'll use multiplication, but not just any equation. You'll have to use a related fact. Remember when we had our fact families and you had, um, you had two addition equations and you had two subtraction equations um, and the same with multiplication and division. And then you had your three numbers up top. So remember, your fact family is like if we have three and two and six, you would have three times two equals six, two times three equals six. The opposite of that is division. Six divided by three equals two, and six divided by two equals three. Those are your related facts. In order to solve, or not solve, to check that our division is correct, we need to use a related multiplication equation. So what might that be? Look at your mats. Oh, kid, it's warm in here holding you. Look at your mat and see what you think. Look at your division mat. How could you describe your picture as multiplication? When division, we started and we separated it. How would you describe this as multiplication? Okay, so we started with 18 divided by three equals six. If you look at your mat, to describe it with multiplication, you would say that you have three sets of how many? You'd say you have three sets of six, which equals how much? What's your total? 18. What is, um, well, I just asked you that, three sets of six. Whoop. Okay. So, oh, kid, okay, guys, hold on. Oh, you're just too wiggly. I, I know, but you're supposed to be asleep. She's supposed to be asleep, you guys. That's why, part of why I was waiting, but. Okay. So I'm going to focus back here to the division. Okay? This is all going to come together. I'm going to write 18 below that 18 there. Three. Six. The product of three and six is 18, right? Three times six is 18. So the second step, the second step in long division is to multiply. I know that, here's what some of you are thinking. You're confused because I wrote 18 under here. Because you think, well, 18 divided by 3 by 6, we already did it. But in, when it comes to doing long division, you guys, you have to check everything you do. Because remember that long equation I wrote at the beginning, 645 divided by 2? If you don't check as you go, there could be a lot of work that you have to go back and check then later. So they've made this process, um, decided to do it this way. 
so that you're checking as you go and you're not wasting time. And if you get to something and it's not right, then you can, you have less work to do to start over. So the first step we did was we divided 18, divided by three, and we got six. To check our answer, I'm gonna put a green check mark here, because we're checking. To check our answer, we multiply a related fact. I'm gonna write that, multiply. Multiply a related fact, which was three times six. I take what I get with that multiplication and I put it right there underneath the 18. Okay, that's our second step is to check with multiplication. Then there's a third step. I'm gonna rewrite that up here. So we had 18 divided by three equals six. Then we did our multiplication to check. Okay, the third step that we are learning today in the long division process is to find out if any objects, in this case, the candy that we're dividing, is to find out if any of the objects are left over after the total has been divided. So the operation that we use to find the difference between the total pieces of candy that we started with, the total that we started with, the operation we use to find the difference between the total we started with and the total that we um, sp split up is subtraction. So then we subtract. So we'll do 18, and we're going to subtract this 18 from what we started with because that's what we got when we multiplied. Okay, so that's what this is down here. I need to set you down. You need to be okay with being set down. Huh? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. I'm going to make... No, child, don't cry. Don't do it. I'm gonna make this green because that's what we did when we checked. So here's where that 18 is coming from. Okay, it's not just any random 18. Hey, you're fine. Okay, that's where this 18 came from was when we did our multiplication and subtraction. You don't see the multiplication in your long division, you have to do it in your head or maybe write it off to the side, but you see the division to the multiplication part, and then you take your answer for multiplication and put it here to do the subtraction. Okay. So what does 18 minus 18 equal? What's 18 minus 18? Well, it's zero. The third step in long division process, honey, hush, is subtraction. Do you think, question for you, do you think that subtracting 18 from 18 is the final step in solving a division problem? It's not a trick question. It is the last step and here's why. This is why, I'm gonna bring this down just a little bit. Oh, sorry, giant hand. Okay. This is why this is the last step. We subtracted what we started with from what we checked to make sure our division was correct. We subtracted them and got zero. Because we have zero, this shows that we're done. The it is the final step here because all of the pieces of candy have been divided and there are none left. There are none left. Okay. We're going to do this whole thing again with 
different numbers, okay? I'm gonna walk you through it. Don't freak out. Even if you don't understand, do what I'm doing, um, and I'll explain it, and maybe it'll come to you, okay? I put some, like, creamer stuff in my coffee this morning because I wanted to try it. It turns out I don't really like it. So now I have to drink my coffee so I don't waste it, but I'm not very happy about it because it doesn't taste as good as I thought it would. But I did put chocolate milk in it, and that tastes really good, too. Okay. okay. I'm going to... Color coordinate here. Um, I don't know about you guys. Sometimes when I use colors, I feel like it helps me know what I'm doing a lot better. Um, green, orange, eh, and we'll do pink for division. Okay, these are the three steps that we do in division. Um, hey. Oosh, oosh, oosh. Okay, the next ones that we're going to do is we have, uh, I need to use something besides the black. There's a lot of black in here. 12 oh. cookies. You have 12 cookies, so take out 12 red squares. 12 cookies, and we're gonna divide them onto two plates. 12 cookies, divide them onto 12 plates. I'm sorry, two plates. 12 cookies, two plates. So you're gonna use your squares. And you're going to separate your 12 cookies or your 12 squares into two groups. Don't put one in each. These are each your sets. Pretend these are your two plates. One, two. Hush, hush, hush. You need to put your 12 cookies onto two equal groups on your plates, okay? So do that while I write this. And I'm gonna write it this way too. 12 divided by two. Okay, put one square in each place until you run out. Yeah, you're whiny because you should be asleep. You're whiny because you should be asleep. Okay, our first step is to do division, is to divide. So you have your 12 squares or your 12 cookies and you divided them into two equal groups. So first you divided, 12 divided by two. And what did you find was the quotient for 12 divided by two. Okay, for 12 divided by two, you got six. Hush. I don't know why I tell her to hush. It's not like she knows what that means. We got six. Put the six above in the ones place because we have a one digit answer. There. 12 divided by two equals six. Are we finished? No, we have a second step. What's our second step? Step two is to check multiplications. Check with multiplication. <laughs> Multiply a related fact. So what's a related fact with multiplication Using these to check and make sure that your total that you started is what it should be. OK, 
okay? And your related fact would be um, the six that we got, and you're going to multiply that six times your sets. Six times two equals what? Six times two equals 12. You're not gonna see too much of the multiplication here. But because 12 is what we got when we multiplied, our third step is to subtract. So I'm gonna write the 12 I got when I multiplied, and I'm going to subtract it from what we started with right here. What is two minus two? Zero. What is one minus one? Another zero. We don't need two zeros, we can just write one. Are we finished with this equation? Are there more steps for us to do? Yes, we're finished. No, there are no more steps because the, this is our final step because all of our cookies have been divided and there are none left. We divided our cookies and there are none left. Yes, the picture is quicker. But you will not always have a division mat, and you're not going to be carrying those red squares around in your pocket. You need to know how to do this on paper, because I promise you, I promise you, you will use this in fourth and fifth grade, you will use this in middle school, and you will use this in high school. If you choose to take math in college, if you go to college, you will use division. You will do long division in some kind of way. So you must know how to do it. Um, don't freak out if you don't get it yet today. Okay, this is only the first lesson. We have got um, two, four, six, seven, seven or eight lessons. You're going to get it. Okay? So don't freak out if you don't get it today. I don't expect you to. We're just introducing it. Okay? We're going to do two more. So we're going to keep going with two more. Clear off your division mat. And take out, um, take out, ooh, I don't know if you have this many. Hey, honey. Um, it says to do 45. If you don't have 45 ones, that's okay, because I'm still going to do um, the math with my division, or my math up here. I don't, I'd be surprised if you guys have 45. I don't think you have that many. Um, but I'm going to give you a minute to count out 45 ones, and I'll set up our equation. I need to put it up a little higher because it's going to run into my math check mark or multiply check mark. 45. Count out your 45 red squares if you have them. And then, once you have them, if you do, start separating out in your mat. If you don't have 45, that's okay. Just wait for me. And we will do this together. 45. Divided by nine equals, okay. I'm just gonna get all, my, all the right markers in a row here. Okay, step number one is to divide. They want us to divide 45 into equal sets. Um, into nine equal sets, excuse me. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 2, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. All right, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine groups. I counted, so I know I have 45 total. And I can see that I don't have any leftovers. My groups are equal. So I've done the first step. How many red squares do you have in each set? Let's call these marbles. We have 45 marbles in nine groups. So if these, we have nine friends and we have a total of 45 marbles, how many marbles does everybody have? We got, everyone has five marbles. Everyone has five marbles. So we divided first. And when we divide, 45 divided by nine, we've got the answer of five. Now we can't just assume that we're done. We need to, a good mathematician, which is what you all are, we need to check our division with a related fact. So we know that we're gonna use this five. So five times what? We're looking to get this as an answer. Five times what will give us that? Five times nine. What is five times nine? You can do your finger trick or you can count by fives. We got 45. So with that product, it comes underneath the whole group we started with. And what are we going to do with it next? We have divided. We, we found 45 divided by nine was five. We checked that answer with a related fact. Now we need to double check and make sure we've used everything that we can. So next we're going to subtract. We're going to subtract our product from our checked answer from the total we started with. 45 minus 45 gives us zero. So were we able to equally divide 45 marbles amongst nine friends? We were, no leftovers. Okay. Um, next one. Um, take, uh, clear up your mats and have 24 squares. 24 red squares. So you'll need some time. I'm gonna redraw this guy since you'll have some time to find your 25 squares. Okay, 24, and we're going to divide 24 into six equal sets, please. 24 divided by six equals what? Sleeping. All I have to do is talk about math long enough and she gets bored and falls asleep. Oh yeah, I gotta set it up too. Okay, so start 
taking your red squares and dividing them into six equal groups. Remember, this is your groups. This is how many are in each group. Divide your 24 by six. Twenty-four divided by six equals Okay, you started with 24 red squares. You divided them or separated or partitioned, whatever word you'd like to use. You partitioned them into six equal groups. So you put one in each group until you ran out. How many did you find are in each group? When you divide 24 into equal groups of six, your answer is four. 24 divided by six equals four. Now we need to check, multiply with a related fact. So we're going to start with our four. We're going to have four times something. Four times what? What's a related fact that we will use? We do four times 24. Nope, we're going to do four times six. So remember this step that we're doing here is mostly in our head or off to the side. We won't show it much when we do it long division. Four times six equals what? Four times six equals 24. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24. The third step in long division is to do what? The third step is to, or excuse me, subtract. We use subtraction to find the difference between the total we started with and the total we put in our sets. We use subtraction to find the difference between the total we started with and the total that we put into our groups. We have to find if there's a difference, so we'll use subtraction. So we'll take the answer, our product, from our check, and we're gonna put it, line it up right under there, and subtract. When you subtract 24 away from 24, what is the answer that you get? Zero. Do we need to keep going and doing additional steps at this point? No, why not? Because we got zero. We were able to confirm that yes, we did separate all of the possible pieces of candy or cookies or marbles into their equal groups. Okay. I hope that that was not too terribly confusing for you. I want you to know 
And if it was confusing, that's okay. That's totally natural. Okay, um, we will do review every day. So tomorrow, when we um, do what we're gonna be doing tomorrow, we're gonna be reviewing exactly what we did today. Okay, you'll get more practice. If you're having a hard time, the people who live with you um, know your brains a lot better than I know your brains. I know your brains pretty good by now. Um, so I'd like to think that I can explain things okay. But the people who live with you um, know your brains better than I do. And maybe they can teach you a way that's more helpful to help you understand this better. Okay? So if you are sad or frustrated right now, um, just know that it's not always going to be this hard. It's hard to learn new things. Division can be weird sometimes when it doesn't make sense. Why are we subtracting and multiplying when we're just dividing? And if you're getting frustrated, um, I want you to understand that it's okay to feel frustrated. Um, try not to take it out on other people. It's okay to be frustrated and to be upset. You just need to deal with that by maybe taking a break somehow, okay? We are done with this kind of practice, so you can put your um, red squares in your mat away. Um, and take out, please, your work text and turn to page 300 in your work text. Turn to page 300 in your work text. So we can start working through our work text together. Work text page 300. Okay, I guess I should open my book to page 300. Ooh, somehow, guys, I have had to learn to do a lot of things with one hand. Um, cause this baby, my goodness, sorry, that was a beautiful look at my knee. This baby just loves to be held and I can't put her down cause then she'll wake up. Okay. <laughs> Page 300 in your work text. At the very top, you see that little orangish yellow box in past chapters. That is where they would have had our biblical worldview for the chapter, and you would just fill in one blank, but now you have to write the whole thing. What is our biblical worldview? Serve with math. Math is a tool to help people work. On that line, in that orange, orangish yellow box, you'll write, math is a tool to help people work. Math is a tool to help people work. Okay, let's look at number one. Haley is helping Cyrus practice long division by dividing 21 stones into seven equal sets. How many stones are in each set? You see that they have it set up in their boxes. Um, in that grid, it looks very similar to the division grids that you guys have, okay? I'm going to push my glasses up. Yeah. They have it um, set up the way that they do in the grids so that you're lining up your numbers properly. Let me tell you from experience, okay? Because remember, there was a time when I was 9 or 10 years old in third grade, and then I've been through middle school, and I've been through high school, doing division, and let me tell you, if you don't line up your place values, it's kind of devastating when you have to redo all of your work. So that's why they've made it with the grids, so that you are able to keep your place values and keep your numbers lined up the way they should be to help make sure that doesn't have to, you don't have to redo the whole thing because you put the wrong number in the wrong place. Um, they want us to find out how many stones are in each set. So the information that you know is that there's 21 stones and they made seven sets. So they've set up for you 21 divided by seven. And you'll see to the right, they have, um, 
the equations all um, pretty much set up and ready for you. So first you're going to divide 20, uh, 7 from 21 by 21. No way. 21 divided by 7. And when you divide 21 by 7, what do you get? How many times will 7 come out of 21? Three times. So 21 divided by 7 equals 3. Write that on the line in your horizontal equation. And then you need to write the 3 above the 1 in 21. So on above the division frame, on the top line, write above the number 1. Do not write it above the number 2. Write it above the number 1. Next, after you divide, your second step is to, excuse me, goodness, your second step is to multiply a related fact. So you'll multiply, they have 7 times 3. It could have been 3 times 7. Doesn't make a difference. You just know that you're not multiplying 3 times 21. Yeah. Okay. 7 times 3 to check that your division was correct. What is seven times three? Twenty-one. So divide and then multiply. What is your third step in long division? You'll do subtraction. So you will take the 21 you started with and you will subtract the 21 you got when you multiplied. So on your horizontal equation, you should have 21. To that grid, you'll write the number 21 underneath the 21 that's already there, just like the way we had it here, except we have the number 24. And I don't have mine in a grid, but maybe I should make it in a grid, huh? So you can see exactly what I'm talking about. I wanna make sure I do this right for you. So they've got it set up like this. Okay, there's your grid. Oh no, I got whiteboard marker on your pants. <gasps> Good thing you don't care. So my numbers are different because this is a different equation, okay? But the 24 that we got when we multiplied comes down here below this 24 that's already here. So yours is gonna be 21 because you have seven times three equals 21. So that 21 would come down here on your paper below that 21. And then you'll solve. What is 21 minus 21? Zero. Okay. Because you have zero, there's no more equations left to do. But now that we've done the work, we need to answer the question. The question is, how many stones are in each set? Haley's helping Cyrus practice long division by dividing 21 stones into seven equal sets. How many stones are in each set? There are three stones in each set. There are three stones in each set. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Look at the page right next to it. Should be page uh, 301. Okay, page 301. It shows you right there up at the top in the blue box. It says long division with facts at the top. Nick, Jake, and Aaron divided 15 toy cars into three equal sets. Each set has five cars. So number one, divide. 15 divided by three equals five. You can see where they wrote the answer on the top line of the division frame. Step two is to multiply. They multiplied three times five. Three coming from what you originally divided by and five being the answer that they got because it's a related fact. So three times five equals 15. So you can see that they took that. And then the third step is to subtract. 15 minus that 15 equals zero. Okay. So number one, two, three, four, and five, 
they're giving you um, the illustration of cars. So 24 cars divided into four equal sets. It's gonna go along with the picture that they have there. The picture is not gonna go with any of the other problems though. Okay. Um, then you'll do the same on the back. Uh, you'll just solve it using those steps. Use that blue box at the top, you guys. It's going to be so, so helpful for you, okay? Um, if you are feeling particularly overwhelmed, um, just do the odd numbers. If this is proving to be kind of difficult for you, just do the odd numbers. But please, everybody do all of the multiplication on page 302. Time to review with Horatio. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, multiplication. Okay, something I know you can do. I'd like you to do all of 301 and 302. Um, maybe you do the odd ones now, and then you come back and do the even ones later. Maybe you can't sit and do all of these at once because it's, it's, it's a lot for your brain to do. The practice is good, and I promise you it's going to pay off. It's going to be worth it, but it's not going to help unless you do it, okay? That's the only way that we're going to keep learning how to do this is to do practice. It's, there's no magic way to uh, just, like, import the information into your brain. Man, I wish, but there's not, okay? So maybe you need to do some now and come back in an hour or two um, and do the others, okay? If you have questions, ask the people at home who love you. Yes, your brother loves you, I promise. <laughs> Ask somebody at home who might know how to do this to help you. And then if they have questions, they can get a hold of me, okay? I love you guys. And um, I'm going to start my language video. Um, but I want you to be, now that we've done our math lesson, go and do math. And if you can't watch my live language video, that's okay. Come back later, okay? We'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.